This is an ABC News special report. Massacre in Las Vegas. Now reporting, George Stephanopoulos. Good afternoon. We're coming on the air right now because Sheriff Joseph Lombard of Las Vegas Police is about to hold another press briefing at the Las Vegas Police Headquarters in just about a minute. Of course, all of the fallout from that massacre yesterday in Las Vegas, 59 people killed, 527 injured by a single gunman armed with an arsenal of rifles, semi-automatic -auto weapons in, in Las Vegas. It all unfolded 10.02, 10.07 p.m. On, on Sunday night in Las Vegas, and the fallout has been horrific. We are waiting for this press conference right now. I'm here with our chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross. We've learned a lot more in the last couple of days about Stephen Paddock's activities. Still no clear indications of a motive. Nothing that fits the profile, as best we know, of a mass murderer at all. A man who had some money, his brother said he was a multimillionaire, uh, was a kind of a loner, but did not had any record with police. Only problem in court was he once uh, sued a casino because he fell down on the floor. Other than that, no other issues. Authorities are very eager to talk with the longtime girlfriend, uh, Mary Lou Danley, who was in the Philippines at the time of the shooting, but especially after the discovery of so many weapons in the house they shared, George, in the Mesquite, Nevada. They're very eager to talk to her and ask her, how could she not know something? A senior Justice Correspondent Pierre Thomas, what is it, 23 weapons in the house, 19 weapons in the hotel room, uh, automatic weapons, or at least altered so they could fire as an automatic weapon. Exactly, George, and law enforcement officials perplexed about this, the scale of what this man planned and how precise he was, George, and 42 weapons. 42 weapons that he had amassed. Again, so many uh, that have been converted, we're told, at least two converted that would take them from basically operating as a semi-automatic rifle to one that functioned essentially as a machine gun. Continuous flow of bullets coming out and making it very easy to shoot all those people. Matt Gutman, on the scene in Las Vegas, you've been inside the Mandalay Bay Hotel. More information about how Mr. Paddock spent those final 72 hours. It seemed that he hunkered down in there, George, pretty extensively for those 48 hours. And in the aftermath, we've seen these new pictures of that suite from which he fired. He apparently punched through two holes and just exposed this entire concert venue to fire. And what's most startling about this is that uh, those long guns that we've been talking to, the 762 caliber weapons have a range of up to a thousand yards, easily within range of this venue. But that crime, that attack could not have been committed had he only been using handguns. They simply don't have the range. It's about 350 to 400 yards from his hotel window into that concert venue down below, George. Also had a tripod to stabilize the guns and remote camera set up in the room. That's right. We hear that there are cameras or he had at least one camera at some point trained on himself for part of it. Obviously, the FBI and other agencies are keeping that very close to the vest. And of course, we don't know the purpose of that camera as we still don't know his motivation for perpetrating this horrific act, George. Pierre Thomas, we don't know his motivation. We know he, he frequented uh, casinos, was a, in some ways, I, I'm not going to use the word professional, but he was an avid uh, gambler video poker. Lots of activity, lots of transactions. Uh, we're tracking as many as 200 transactions that he may have made that uh, may have come to the attention of law enforcement, George. Again, so many unanswered questions. And one official I talked to just a couple hours ago said, Pierre, by now we normally know a lot more about motive. Very concerning. Well, one of the things, Brian Ross, is apparently they, they hadn't found yet any social media accounts. Not that we can see at all. His girlfriend did have a Facebook page now taken down, but nothing that we saw of, of Mr. Paddock, well, not at all. And, and Mary Lou Danley, one of the things that surprised all of us yesterday was how quickly the police came to the conclusion, authorities came to the conclusion, they said that she was not involved in this in any way. Is there skepticism rising? It certainly is, and they're dialing back that uh, an early statement, saying now they want to talk to her about the possibility she may have had a role. The question really, how could she not know there were so many weapons in the house that he had been stockpiling these over several weeks? And also the question of the money transfers he made to the Philippines, tens of thousands of dollars in the weeks before the shooting sent to the Philippines to someone there. Yeah, we know that he sent the money to the Philippines. We don't know it was to her. That's right. But one of the things we also learned yesterday, uh, Brian, is that the couple in Mesquite had seen them as recently 
as two weeks ago, they said, acting relatively normally. That's right. She arrived in the Philippines, according to travel records that ABC has reviewed, on September 15th, which was just two weeks or so before the shooting. Uh, she had not been there in a couple of years. She was there, made a quick trip to Hong Kong, back to the Philippines, and was in the Philippines on the day of the shooting, we were told. And here comes Sheriff Lombardo. Let's listen in. I don't have room for... It's not going to work. Come on. You everybody in? <coughs> Where's Ken? Oh, there he is. I keep my eye on you. Here he is. How are you? Carlos? We good? All right, we're not going to show any video. Okay. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, you're all aware who I am, uh, Sheriff Joe Lombardo, Clark County. Um, there's going to be a little bit different orchestration in this press conference as compared to the rest. Um, what I'm going to do right now, I think it's important that we address uh, the victim issues we are experiencing and the resource issues that we are experiencing. So I'm going to uh, key on that, on the original portion of this, and then Subsequently, Commissioner Sislak is going to provide some donation information and acknowledgement. And then I, after that, I will come back to the podium and address the overall investigation, where we stand and where we are going. Now, reference the investigation piece, I don't want to repeat of what I experienced yesterday. Um, it's an ongoing investigation, so I'll be limited in the details that I provide you. Um, but hopefully we can get through this with some modicum of decorum. Um, so please um, don't rush me all at once. When we get to the question phase, I will identify you if you just raise your hand. Sound fair? All right, we'll get through this. Okay, so as a matter of uh, formality, our department has worked through the night to identify all the victims of Sunday evening's mass shooting on route at the Route 91 Harvest Festival. We have identified all but three victims. We still have an active scene at the grounds near Mandalay Bay, so we ask anyone to stay away from that area until further notice. The FBI is working diligently to clear that scene. So the question is, the FBI versus us. Um, we have uh, partnered with the FBI, as I said, from the very beginning of this in the investigative phase. The FBI has brought uh, a large amount of resources out of Washington, D.C. to assist us with that. Um, so we, it, the reason why the Harvest Festival is still in continuation of investigation is not only solely uh, related to the removal of the victims, but it's also documentation of the scene. Uh, so we're using um, the best practice technology to ensure that we have complete documentation. That's why it's taking a longer period of time associated with this. So. We, we ask for everybody's patience. As far as Las Vegas Boulevard, uh, north and south, uh, we anticipate to be open in shortly, in the next few hours, um, to benefit with commerce and what we do as a community. All right, the, the key component here is resources and victim identification. So uh, bear with me. Um, I'm gonna try to get the, through this the best I can, but the important piece is if you missed a number um, we are putting up on LVMPD.com in the next hour the listing of all numbers I shall provide you today and for people out in the public uh, to contact us if they are lacking this or they don't see this broadcast. Okay, we're asking for anyone who might have information about the shooting in a criminal capacity or is a victim of the shooting to contact us via 311. If you are out of state, if you have left since um, the shooting and you have discovered you are, you, you feel that you have become a victim or you, you realize you have an injury associated to it, um, we're still asking you to contact us, but the out of state number will be 702 828 3111. Additionally, if you are local, and you have the ability to respond to a local substation, a working police substation um, locals are familiar with, you have the ability to file a report at that location. 
Now the family reunification. All that is occurring at the Family Resource Center at the Convention Center located at 3150 Paradise Road. You can go there to file a missing person report. You can go there to have contact with the coroner's office. You can go there to get answers to your questions as far as family reunification. The phone number, if you have left the area, is 1-866-535-5654. Now, we went through a little short process here recently where that number was down. We provided a separate number, um, but we will go back to that original number because we have the technical aspects of that fixed. So I want to be very clear on the difference. If you are reporting a crime, or you feel you are a victim of a crime, 311 is your outlet or a local police substation. If you are looking for victim information or family reunification, the Family Resource Center on Paradise Road is your point of contact. <clears throat> now, personal property. We were getting several questions throughout yesterday and continuing today on people attempting to recover their personal property from the Route 91 scene. Um, we are working out the details of that. We're in the planning phase of that, and we will have an answer for that in the next couple hours. So LVMPD.com will provide an answer to that um, probably before we have another press conference. Uh, so, but we are working diligently uh, to get individuals who left personal property at the scene back to them as soon as possible. I anticipate it will not take place at the Route 91 location, uh, but I do not want to give you furtherance of clarification at this point. So you will be provided that. The other issue is donations. As you can imagine, in any critical incident, the outpouring of support um, from private citizens, corporations, and everybody else associated with concern for the victims is overwhelming. And we appreciate that. But it comes a point where we can't manage it. Now, the Red Cross is unable to manage it. Um, we are unable to manage it at the substations. Um, so if it's hard goods, such as water or canned goods or stuff that is not, will not become perishable, um, three square and Catholic Charities is accepting those donations. So we're asking you um, to provide that information to your listening public and to uh, accept donations at that point. So the areas of, and let me give you the addresses for those. So Catholic Charities is obviously at 1501 Las Vegas Boulevard North and three squares located at 4190 North Pecos Road. At this point, I will uh, um, acquiesce to Commissioner Sisolak, and he will give you an update on the donation phase of this as far as victim um, satisfaction, and then we'll, I will return and we will conduct uh, in a Q&A &A associated with the investigation. Commissioner. Thank you, Sheriff, and we appreciate you all being here today to give you a bit of an update on where we stand. Uh, the fund that the sheriff and I set up yesterday has now surpassed 53,000 individual donations. It's in excess of $3.7 million as we speak. I want to bring special, we need a lot more resources. We're going to need a lot more money. We've got individuals that are going to need future surgeries and, and help and so forth moving forward. I want to acknowledge a few special individuals not included in that total of $3.7 million. Last night, a private citizen called both the sheriff and I and contributed $500,000 the fund. That is not included in that total this morning. Uh, Wayne and Kathleen Newton called me and they have donated $100,000. That is not included in that total. Uh, for those who want to contribute and don't want to do it on GoFundMe, you can make a check to Las Vegas Victims Fund and mail it either to the county office, to my office, or to the sheriff's office. But I just got off the phone with Jim uh, Murren from MGM International and the sheriff and I both spoke to Jim and uh, obviously, they have stepped up in an enormous manner with this community and everything that uh, they continue to do. And on behalf of MGM and their over 50,000 employees, they have contributed $3 million to this fund. So uh, we appreciate everyone's support, the donations from $5 to now $3 million. 
and there's a lot of need and we are going to do everything we possibly can to raise money for each of these individuals. So we appreciate you continuing to encourage folks, your viewers and readers, to support the uh, campaign. It's Las Vegas Victims, either on uh, GoFundMe or you can make a check to Las Vegas Victims Fund. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Sheriff. Uh, we're working through the idea of possible distribution that comes with. We've already got some uh, inquiries. I think it's going to be a few days before we can coordinate how we're going to distribute money. Uh, right now, we're not looking at the minor property losses that some people have called on regarding, you know, backpacks and shoes and phones. We're looking at more major expenses as it relates to, you know, uh, surgeries, medical expenses, funeral expenses, transportation, and so forth. But we should have more details with you. We're working through the county office and the sheriff's office to develop something in the immediate future in terms of where people can go, who they can call to start distributing the money that the people are most desperate. So thank you all very much. Okay, just a quick synopsis or current status of the investigation. I won't reiterate what we discussed yesterday in previous uh, press conferences, um, but we have um, completed the investigation at the Reno property um, and I'm sure the question will be presented uh, what what was recovered there. So it was n numerous electronic items, uh, additionally five handguns and two shotguns and a plethora of ammunition. So um, we have served search warrants at three separate locations. Um, that would be the room at the Mandalay Bay, um, the Mesquite location and the Reno location. Additionally, um, we served a search warrant on the suspect's vehicle located at the Mandalay Bay. Um, so I'm happy to answer any questions. Sure. Yes, sir. Can you uh, be specific about the modifications to the weapons to make them automatically? Is there different versions of what that can be? What were we talking about here? Um, the question was, Is there what are the modifications associated with the weaponry? Um, ATF is uh, participating in that evaluation. I can't give you an answer on whether any of them are automatic or not. Uh, but we are aware of a device called a bump stop, and uh, and that enables an individual to speed up the discharge of ammunition. Um, I don't want to give you any more details on that, um, but in partner with the FBI, the ATF, uh, they are uh, sending those weapons um, back east to the FBI crime lab uh, for further evaluation. Just to be clear, sure. you found that there. That yes. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, yes, sir. No, we don't have that information yet, but I will assure you that the investigation with her is ongoing, um, and we anticipate some information here from her shortly. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am, I do not. Now, here you go. <laughs> Just let me back up a little bit. There's a lot of information I do know, okay? But it's an ongoing investigation, and when I say I do not know, I may know. Um, but <laughs> but um, as you can imagine, in a criminal investigation, we want to ensure the continued safety of our community and that all those questions are answered. And we, I assure you this investigation is not ended uh, with the demise of Mr. Paddock. Sure. Yes. Um, no, I'll answer your last question first. No, uh, we are making progress, but I don't have complete answers yet. Um, so I anticipate a, a substantial amount of information to come in in the next 48 hours. Hold on, let me finish the rest of this. As far as the injuries, um, you know, it goes across the board. The coroner uh, commented on that yesterday. We have trampled injuries. We have people trying to escape um, injuries of their own de um, device. Uh, we have gunshot wounds. So if you're looking at total type of injuries associated with all their injuries and the people that died, um, it goes across the board. Uh, I can't give you a percentage associated with gunshot versus um, other types of injuries. Are the numbers of the general numbers 59 and 5.5, are those changed or are they the same? Um, we believe the injury number has uh, 
decreased slightly. And when I say slightly, maybe 20, um, because we had a double count error occurring at one of the hospitals. Yeah. But we're looking close and still in close proximity of the number I provided you. Um, I can't tell you her current whereabouts right now. All I know is the Philippines, um, and we uh, we are in conversation. Is she a suspect? Uh, currently, she's a person of interest. The girlfriend. Yes. Yes, ma'am. The Daily Mail has released photos that say that shows the hotel room after the SWAT team enter, and it shows guns and ammunition inside. Many outlets are redisseminating. Can you verify the legitimacy of these photos, and should any other outlets disseminate them? I can't verify whether they're legitimate or not. What I can tell you is I'm very troubled by it. Um, we have an internal investigation occurring as we speak on how those photographs were obtained by the public. Sure, sure, sure. 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 Can you talk then to what was found inside that hotel room that the gunman used? Was this a gunman that was found reporting? Was the gunman transmitting that video anywhere else? Um, I'm not aware of any transmission, but there was cameras. There was cameras located um, in outside of the room and inside of the room, uh, along with the firearms. And he had set up how many cameras? I, I don't know what the specific if numbers you know are. Um, well, I, I anticipate he was looking for anybody coming uh, to take him into custody. So essentially, so, you have a recording of him carrying out this crime? No. That's not essentially what I'm saying. That is being evaluated. Uh, the FBI took all digital and electronic uh, evidence into custody, and we are evaluating. Sure. Yes, sir. Do we know if this man was targeting this particular area of the hotel room? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, we haven't developed that um, yet. So the, the I will report, provide you that information at a later date. To follow on that, there's a report that he may have intended to target the United States Musical Concert. We're unable, before, we We're unable to confirm that. We're unable to confirm that. Sir, I have a question about the 72 after 72 minutes which were hired. We're just trying to get clarity as to, you know, what is the 72 minutes that the SWAT team is going to choose to tell them? You know, when the shots were reported to the time when they entered the hotel room, they were really good. Can you give us a little more specific? What's the clarity? What's the clarity you're seeking? Uh, we received the call at 10.08 p.m. Um, the best of our estimates and, re and video review, uh, he continued to fire um, at a progressive successive rate for approximately nine minutes. Um, as you can see by any video you see in the public space, it was hard to determine where they were coming from. Um, once it was evaluated, it was coming from the Mandalay Bay. As you can imagine, how hard it would be to pinpoint the room from the outside. Um, officers subsequently formed up, teamed up, and moved over to the Mandalay Bay to, in order to locate and engage. Um, but that was in conjunction with the Mandalay Bay security. Now, this is an opportunity for me to tell you something. The Mandalay Bay security was fantastic. I don't want anybody assuming that they are unsafe by, you know, staying at one of our hotels. We would not have uh, engaged this individual in the time lapse that we did uh, without their assistance. Uh, we received information via their their dispatch center and or their uh, operations center, their call center, uh, from individuals staying within the Mandalay Bay that helped us locate where this individual was sequestered. Hold on, I want to finish her question. All right, um, and so subsequently that takes time. As you can imagine, um, moving from the location of the event, deciding whether you're going to help victims evacuate or you're going to decide whether you're going to take charge and put an element together and go engage this individual. So we have, we have a lot of bifurcation of responsibilities associated, especially in a dynamic event. I, I want to say kudos to those officers that got together and said, this is what we trained for, active shooter, we're putting an element together, let's go engage this individual and locate them. Okay? And that's what we did. 
And when uh, the security officer was engaged by the suspect, we backed off for immediate apprehension and SWAT team formed and made entry. What time did the security officer I don't have that time for you. Sure. How concerned are you about your officers facing weapons like these? I'm absolutely concerned. The world has changed. And, um, and you know, who would have ever imagined this situation? I couldn't imagine it. And for this individual to take it upon himself to create this chaos and harm is unspeakable. And, you know, we have to try to spitball or what if these uh, situations at all points when we train and ensure that we have proper response. And I think we did a fantastic job. So Sheriff Mandalay Bay Security identified the room before SWAT arrived? No. Uh, well, yeah, before SWAT arrived, but not before my officers arrived. Um, the, um, they were married or hand to hand with my officers uh, when we made entry over to the hotel. And it was a matter, if you recall yesterday, I said between floor 29 and 32. And during that process of evaluating the floors, uh, we received additional information uh, where he was located and they immediately responded. Sheriff, what time did SWAT breach I don't have that number for you. Sure. Uh, that's for us to evaluate in the investigation. Sure. No, they were throughout the venue. They even had some um, victims uh, that met their demise outside of the venue. And then we had individuals who had been shot, uh, and they continued to run away, and then they uh, passed away um, several blocks from the venue. Sure. We also had very heroic acts of people attending the event. We have numerous v videos depicting people attending, normal citizens providing medical aid and providing transportation uh, for victims to get to the hospital. Sure. Yes, sir. Uh, going back to the point that my colleague said on the camera that we set up the room, it sounds, at least I'm, I'm sorry if I'm interpreting this wrongly, it sounds like he has set those cameras up to give himself warning of the approach of police officers. You know, in your mind, if that indeed was the case, and I know you don't want to get in the mind of a bad man, but how would you judge this man's preparation and determination to do this based on those time? I don't even need that um, bit of information to make a judgment. This individual was premeditated, obviously premeditated. The fact that he had the, the type of weaponry and amount of weaponry in that room, um, it was preplanned extensively and I, I'm pretty sure he evaluated everything that he did in his actions which is troublesome um, I, I, I was hoping you know I pray that in these situations that a citizen because we can't be at all places at all times that a citizen sees something says something and we act on that quite often what we experience in our line of work a citizen thinks it's trivial and they say no nah, I don't want to bother the police we ask you to bother the police um, because those individuals, especially uh, housekeeping type individuals or any cab drivers, anybody in the public space that can assist us, we ask them to call. Sheriff, his girlfriend had any knowledge? Okay, let me ask back here, Ricardo. Police or security guards uh, fire any shots of any time during the encounter? Um, during while he was discharging his weapons, yeah. we are not aware of that. No security guard or police other than the encounter at the room. And can, can you expand on what went right? Uh, I know you practice for scenarios like this, maybe it's not exactly this scenario. Can you expand on what went right? Uh, with you know what, I'm glad you asked that, Ricardo, because obviously people have the assumption things went wrong uh, in this type of carnage. But what went right is we saved hundreds of lives. In an event, and this guy having an ability with those weaponry, uh, the carnage that could occur outside of what did occur uh, a lot more was prevented um, because of our police action in short time and private security action in short time uh, to save some lives. Sure. Can I ask you, with all of this in the room, with us, the cameras now, the guns, everything else, yesterday you had said that there had been hotel staff inside that room during this day. Is that still believed? Did he turn away housekeeping? Did housekeeping go in there during this time? Um, the only thing I know at this point is room service was provided. Sure. Can I ask you? I absolutely believe that. Yes, I do. 
How do you know that's not occurring? Well, I guess that's what I'm asking. Is that, no. that, that is occurring. Sure. Yes, ma'am. You have been investigating this nonstop for the last several days. How are you and your investigators? I'm so glad you asked that. <laughs> no, I am. I'm not being uh, sarcastic. Um, we're doing good. I'm actually very proud of our people. I mean, this guy here is the local SAC, Aaron Rouse, uh, in charge of the FBI. You know, it's important. Greg Castle talked about this yesterday, the chief of the Clark County Fire Department. I'm telling you right now, this jurisdiction has the best partnerships, I believe, in the United States as far as public safety. Um, we would not be able to accomplish what we did, as you described, in the last 48 hours without that partnership. Um, the FBI stepped into the plate to help us with uh, evidence, documentation, and prosecution. Pride there from Sheriff Joseph Lombardo, saying that his team saved thousands, hundreds of lives, perhaps, during that shooting in Las Vegas just two nights ago. Also says he's frankly worried about his people saying the world has changed. Some news there in the press conference as well. The sheriff saying that the injuries, the injury count has gone down by about 20. There was some double counting at one of the hospitals. Also more on Stephen Paddock, the shooter in the arsenal he carried. We want to bring in our senior justice correspondent, Pierre Thomas. And, and Pierre, a couple things there from the sheriff. Number one, he said he couldn't be sure that there were automatic weapons, but that Mr. Lombardo had those bump stocks, which can convert a semi-automatic weapon into an automatic weapon. Also confirmed there were cameras in that room. George, he's confirming uh, some of the critical details we've been reporting. Uh, the bump stocks allow uh, an assault rifle to function almost exactly like a machine gun. The, the amount of bullets that come out, uh, they come out so much more quickly. Uh, also, uh, we have reporting tonight that uh, the suspect had a uh, camera outside of the room, as well as the information that we broke yesterday about a camera being inside the room. The camera outside of the room, according to a source, would have allowed the suspect to monitor police potentially as they were approaching. Yeah. Uh, one source said they've never seen anything like this in terms of the planning and the meticulous planning involved. He could see when they were coming, how much time he had. Brian Ross, lots of questions as well about the roommate, Mary Lou Danley. Uh, Sheriff saying she's still in the Philippines. They hope to get more information from her soon. Perhaps most interestingly, asked if she's a suspect. He said, currently, a person of interest. And that's a significant change from being just a helpful witness. She is labeled now a person of interest, which in law enforcement terms means she's not quite a suspect, but she's not off the hook either, particularly because the discovery of so many weapons in the home they shared in Mesquite, Nevada, and the explosives and the ammunition there all raise the question of how could she not know something was going on. Matt Gutman, the, the questions also about those final 48 hours and the uh, questions about if that camera actually captured the shooting itself. Uh, we don't know that just yet, George. The FBI has possession of those tapes. They're obviously going to do a very th thorough forensic check over them. But one interesting tidbit that we saw from some of these new images that we put out uh, from that room or just outside the room is that he was, in fact, using room service. So uh, the notion is that he had shut himself into that room for a couple of days. And we do know that um, it had been serviced a couple of times. The question is, how was he able to conceal that mass amount of weaponry? Uh, more than 20 weapons, thousands of rounds of ammunition from the people who were coming in and out of the room. And how come nobody found him out? I know the, the um, Sheriff Lombardo commended the work of uh, security at Mandalay Bay, but these are still questions that this investigation is really going to have to look into, George. Okay, thank you all very much. All of you will be joining David Muir in Las Vegas for a special edition tonight of Worlds. And you can get at home uh, breaking news alerts anytime by downloading our ABC News app. I'm George Stephanopoulos in New York. Have a good day. This has been a special report from ABC News.